since they're seeing their parents shoot people up, they're seeing it on the streets, the rap videos. I'll say it, the fucking video games, man. I think video games are a huge problem. I know that the CDC says that that's not an issue and that it's unlikely to cause violence, but I see my own kids, what happens to them when they play video games. And I see what kind of kids that they turn into. I see what kind of kids, what, what they watch on TV. What do, you, what do you think about that, Elijah? Because you grew up <clears throat> with me. <laughs> I raised you. And we, I, I mean, I remember some of my earliest memories of us video gaming would have been like with uh, Splinter Cell or something like that, where you were yeah. too young to really like well, be effective at it, but you would watch me play and I'm here like murdering well, people on screen. Hitman or we played when I was yeah, like Hitman, six. Call of Duty. And like we did that, and he's my, not shooting anybody up. My younger sister too was playing Call of Duty when she was like four, like playing multiplayer with us. <laughs> and I don't know. I think it's more of. I mean, I don't think we constantly played video no, games in I our think house or anything. There's but... a balance of being like, "Hey, go outside and be a human," uh, which I made you guys do. Yes. I, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you right now. Like, I'm raising three young kids, all under the age of ten. Um, and they all have friends that are under the age of 10. And I will say right now that 98% of the children that my kids hang out with are, I will say, addicted to screens. They are yeah, addicted yeah, yeah. to video oh, games. They cannot 100. be without their phones. They yeah. cannot be without a screen from them. They cannot behave without it. Our kids are not allowed. My kids are not allowed to have screens. They're allowed to have them on, uh, on Saturdays at the distillery when we work there all day. That's the only day that they're allowed to have screens. Um, but anytime their kids come over, my kids are outside skateboarding. We've got ramps, we've got trampolines and all the kids want to do is play. On, and, and so they know my sons are not allowed to play on the video games. So they will literally be at our house sitting on the couch playing a video game while my kids are playing something else. I'm like, why even come over to my house? If you're just going to play on your phone, why not just fucking <laughs> stay at your house and play on your phone? Why Mike? <laughs> right. Like, what yeah. is the point of you fucking being here? Yeah. We always had, we weren't like. It wasn't like we were limited, like there was a rule to be like, oh, you have to, you only have X amount of hours. It was like, hey, go outside and be a human. Okay, so uh, now here, here's another thing that I'll say about that, out. Elijah, is you have a caring father figure so that's, what I was that's willing say. to put some rules and some discipline the behind home, it. The home life, like I probably had in the top 0.01% of home lives, like growing up, as far as uh my values and well right now uh, something just came out only 17 percent 17.4 percent something like that i mean it, it's in that range less than 18 percent of homes in this country right now have kids with married parents so that's like that's my point. you're you There's, got married had kids you have a family there that's are, only 18 percent of our country broken homes and how the parents basically just say well that's not really a big deal compared to these other things. So do what you want. Uh, yeah. I, know, like, I, I, look, friends, I see it all the time all day. They spend all day on video games. I, and if they're back in high school and half of them are weirdos now, uh, if, if, if my kids hang out with, with other kids. Um, and I'll tell you this <clears throat> from experience, my kids act completely different when they play a video game. And I saw somebody in the comments say that their kid acts different too. They talk shit. They, they talk things. When my kids hang out with other kids, they are influenced so negatively by those other kids that I wonder are kids negatively influenced by my children. And I'm blind to it because when my kids hang out with other kids, they come back with all sorts of new, like crazy jokes and crazy lingos. And then my kids shut down and they want to do what those kids are doing and they want to play video games. And it's like, man, it's super sad because when they're not around those other kids, all my kids want to do like Skateboard. yesterday they had a manual contest where it was how long, how far they could go on just two wheels of their skateboard. And they must've been outside for an hour um, with <laughs> chalk chalking how far they could go on two wheels on the skateboard. And that's all they wanted to do. But if you take them to somebody else's house that has a video game, all they want to do is play that video game. So to <clears throat> where, where this conversation seems to be going is at least at the beginning is talking about, I guess the, the, the can, root can I, causes. Yeah, go ahead. I think, the root cause is bad parenting. I hundred percent. There's no. It doesn't matter because I could play video games. Human all nature. Day. Human nature hasn't changed. I could. I could play video games all day. Be a fat, lazy piece of shit. Like, but I'm not a horrible human because I had a good parent. Like I had a good dad. I had a good mom. And if I stepped out of line, I, there were consequences. And that's. That's what doesn't exist anymore. 
And, and it's I, true. I mean, an, we, an, ero an erosion, an erosion age, of the family unit. Exactly. And I hear people my age who even have, who like don't, don't even like really discipline their kids. And I'm just like, dude, that's not that's not healthy like there has to be a healthy level of discipline and, there and i mean that starts with a father yeah, like that's exactly. that starts with a, good, a mother can whoa, only whoa, whoa. a mother you're, can you're only you're bordering be, on things that you can't say tangent sure sure <laughs> a mother can only be like take on so many roles right the the role of nurturer the role of you know uh provider and they but she, you you can't have all the roles under one thing you can't be the disciplinarian the nurture. I mean, you can, and there are women who do it, but it's very, very difficult. And being married, yeah, we're, we're not talking about with three kids um, out of so necessity. Much... We're talking about out of choice, out of out right. of a lack of discipline for your own life. Like, right? You don't work on your own relationships, and so you have uh, splintered families, and you don't work at it. And therefore, uh, I mean, you might have the best woman in the world, and and the husband walks out on her or leaves her. That she can only do her best, right? She can only be a single mother raising the kids, getting them ready for school, getting up in the morning, taking care of the yard, taking care of the things trying to be the nurturer, trying to be the discipliner. I mean, that is a lot on the plate of one human being. And I would say that it goes for the same as a single father. I, I couldn't imagine being a single father. And that's why I think being a, a married couple and doing things uh, to raise your children properly, is super important. And it's something that I advocate. Don't be a piece of shit husband first, and then you can be a great father and it's easy, but it's very hard to be a good father when you're also a piece of shit husband and you're yeah. you're not doing what your your husbandly duties are so either I, if, um, if we if we're to i think this is a valuable i think this is a really valuable conversation when it comes to the starting point for talking about school shootings because if we just work from the event themselves and get lost just in the the legal legal nature of the the particular events we miss dealing with the root cause because if school shootings are an issue again we said there's been 29 shootings at a school in 2021 21 since august so if this is indeed an issue which i i would say it which is let's an let's issue. let's let me clear that up they weren't they weren't in school they were had the whole summer and then i don't think anybody was in school during the, the last covid season so right. i think this is the first season where everybody's kind of back in school mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that's probably why a huge spike in and school sure. shootings can, can are up right i think one of the big things is uh, what a lot of people don't think about is that in school is actually a break for a lot of uh, kids who have awful home lives. Like they yeah. look forward to being yeah. in school. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Some people only get fed in school. Locked at home yeah. in that environment. That's true, yeah. Like what, what mental toll did that have? Right, that's it. So we talk about um, some of the keys to prevent – because what we know for a fact is that human nature has never changed. Human, right. there, there are, there is evil, there is good, and there is, there is a perpetual battle between, uh, between principles and ideologies and practices that that promote the common good, and there are those that try to tear at that fabric, and that's what we call evil. That wh whatever origin story you believe about humanity, these are undeniable facts. Humans have been doing atrocious things to each other for all recorded human history, so human nature hasn't changed. Uh, but our home life has changed, so the, the 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 nuclear family being disrupted like it has, and then you have a lack of discipline and boundaries, which is actually a really really healthy thing for kids. Uh, we've lost that, and then uh, this uh, this introduction to distractions that that make those first two things a strong nuclear family with good boundaries. We have all sorts of distractions. The screen, like you're talking about, uh, there's there's a lot of things out there. But that mental health aspect of things um, is is a huge thing that you just brought up. And I saw um, someone in the Facebook comments talking about that too. How how you deal deal with and recognize uh, mental stress and problems, but yet we had, I mean. There's there's these factors that have increased mental stress on kids, and I think that we've identified some of those. Drop yours in the comments if you feel like there's other factors contributing to the mental distress of kids and a decrease in the mental health in kids. Drop you, drop your thoughts in the comments, of course, and like and share this stream up as well, um, so that more people can can hear about these kind of conversations that they're not going to get elsewhere. Um, yeah, I, I always say that the, the school shooting thing, I really do feel like it starts at home. And if your child goes and shoots up a school, 
I mean, to me, honestly, it's not even a question of whether I should go to jail or not. I should absolutely go to jail. I failed. I had one. The most important job in the world is to be a parent. And when you fuck that up, like if you want to take extreme ownership, then yeah, then then go to jail for it. I, I know a lot of cops and there, and there are a lot of cops out there that are just frankly bad parents. And I think that's in any profession. But I think when you have kids, the, the one thing that has to be the most important thing in your life is your kid, not your own success, not your own physical fitness, not your own um, guy's time or not your own hobby time. And, and so I know these friends that they have so many hobbies, um, so many hobbies. And, and I think to myself, well, where do you have time for your kids? And then you go and see their kids for a few minutes and you're like, well, Jesus. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching this clip of the Failure to Stop podcast. If you like the show, the clips that you're seeing here, you can listen to the full episode wherever podcasts can be found. Be sure to drop that five-star rating and a review on Apple Podcasts. And if you want to connect with us on social media, look for Failure to Stop, whatever platform you're on.